Let's start this video by showing you what this device is supposed to do and it's supposed to light up blue but it's currently on charge at the moment for a specific reason so I'm going to press the button once, press it twice and after a few seconds bubbles of hydrogen will start going up from the electrodes at the bottom. It looks quite nice actually. It looks nicer when it's blue but uh, it's not bad in red. But the reason I'm not showing you this uh, lighting up blue is because if I pull the charging lead out now and it is more or less fully charged. It does a little uh, reset thing. So let's uh, press the button again. Where is the button? Here's the button. It lights up blue initially. Press it again and it starts its sequence. And then it goes really dim and then it crashes and stops working. So let's uh, take a closer look at this because it's not working. So here's the device in question. I have to say, when it first arrived, it worked briefly and then just suddenly stopped working. And I thought maybe the battery's run flat and I charged the battery up fully and it still doesn't work. And then I thought maybe it's because it's designed to be used with distilled water, which has higher resistance. Maybe it was overloading it by putting tap water in, which has a lower resistance and would pass more current. And I tried distilled water and nothing happened because, of course, it's got a very high resistance. And then I diluted the distilled water with tap water to see if that would work. And as soon as it reached the point it started conducting, it stopped working again. Mm, not very good. So this defective piece of crap came from Easy to Buy Deals, and it's called a portable hydrogen-rich water maker, ionizer, generator, um, filter, all sorts of uh, things. Quite widely sold and quite expensive as well at the moment. But the price will come down, hopefully, uh, especially given that this particular version doesn't work. And it's typical quackery. It says, hydrogen-rich cup manual. Hydrogen-rich water is more than the known antioxidants of vitamins A, C, E and green tea. Hydrogen itself is the best natural antioxidant, so the water that is added to hydrogen has a strong reduction function that neutralises the reactive oxygen species free radical in the blood cells of the body. This is just basically scientific gibberish. It is a strong reducibility, scavenging free radicals and effectively changing the constitution of sub-health, whatever that is. And here's a bit that's aiming at the old people that are getting, well, old. Increased selectivity and permeability. Anti-aging. Oh, it said anti-aging. Enhance skin elasticity. Prevent pigmentation and age. Would it improve my skin elasticity, I wonder? And to accelerate excretion of harmful substances and promote metabolism. Are you going to poop out hydrogen? That would be exciting. Do not use naked flames while pooping hydrogen. So basically speaking, you put water into it uh, up to about this sort of 80% mark. When you press the button, it wakes up. I can do that right now. I can press the button and it wakes up and the blue light shows. Press it again, there's a, it flashes and there's a wee delay and then it goes into the hydrogen generation mode and it, the blue light is working. But as soon as I put water in, it stops working and the bubbles go up and it is a really nice visual effect. And then it says there are two switches at the bottom of the machine. There's one. Uh, and it can exchange use for a week with anti-washing function, more health to use. And what it actually means, because I've done a little test and I made a guess in the first place, the, it's called back flushing. And what it does is it swaps the polarities because, uh, hold on, let's uh, bring a bit of paper in. Let's bring this bit of paper in and doodle. I shall turn that off since it's busy doing nothing. Now, the top here comes off like this to fill it, but this also, turn it back on again, yeah, turn it off, it's a plastic container, it mentions borosilicate glass in the listing, but it isn't, and it's got this little plastic sort of uh, spacer here that just rotates freely above metal electrodes that are just a sort of circular pattern of electrodes that are sort of, uh, well, one is positive, one is negative, and the water is, uh, flows between them and ultimately it baked, breaks it down electrolytically. Now, I got this bit of paper in. What was I going to draw? Ah, yes. If you get water and you put a electrode in, connect negative to it, and you put another electrode in and connect positive to it, you get all electrolysis. And what actually happens is the negative electrode, little bubbles of hydrogen will come off. And because the hydrogen is much smaller atom, effectively, uh, it creates lots of fine bubbles. It's, you don't actually see much coming off the other electrode at all. It is mainly, the main effect is the tiny little bubbles of the hydrogen. And if you use a big electrode, 
a big round electrode as I did experimentally, you get fairly big bubbles that go up in a rather unexciting manner. But if you use a rough that up and create lots of sharp edges on it, you get lots of tiny little bubbles go up and it's a good effect. And that is the whole point because this is a sort of visual effect. And when it was working, uh, I couldn't really taste much difference to the water, but for some odd reason, when you sniffed it, when you opened it up, you felt, you heard the pressure change you open it because it made that slight hiss noise. I'll put this out of the way, it's not needed anymore. This was the little slip that comes with it. Hmm, high, ox high hydrogen concentration bottle, it says. Uh, but when you opened it up and sniffed it, it smelled like ozone for some reason. And I'd normally associate ozone with, sh uh, with splattered... Uh, uh, oxygen atoms that were then recombining, it's quite odd. I think we should open this up though and see what's inside. The This little disc is clipped over. If I can rotate this round uh, the LED position, so I'm guessing I could possibly just rip this off. Will I rip it off? Let's rip it off. Let's get a pair of long nose pliers in here and gently, gently liberate this. There's the electrodes. Oh, that's quite neat. Um, what voltage is it putting across those? Uh, oh, let's uh, set it to, let's be optimistic and say 200 volts. So uh, let's turn this on. And those two screws are obviously the electrodes. So I'm getting about 12 volts. Uh, and I'm guessing that if I swap the polarity switch in the bottom, it will read negative 12 volts. It's reading negative 12 volts, so that is just swapping the polarity. It's quite a nice arrangement in here, the, the, the way they've got them closely coupled. They're quite thick as well. I was expecting it to be thin, pin, punched metal. It looks relatively thick, and I'm guessing it might be stainless steel. Hold on, I shall turn it off and see if I can stick a magnet to it, although that's no guarantee that uh, it's whatever, if it's a... Uh, stainless steel or not, because there are different versions. It's got no real magnetic attraction. It could, it might be. It looks like stainless steel. Let's, let's just assume that's stainless steel. So how do I get into this? I think the bottom has this foam pad that might be hiding something. So let's pop this off. Now, I keep bumping the button and switching this on. It has a USB charging port. Hold on, before we open this though, let's make a guess at what's inside. So let's bring this back in again. And I'm gonna guess, based on the fact it's putting out 12 volts, it's got the USB input, is going to go to charging circuitry. Charge, because there is a lithium cell inside it and that will be connected to a lithium cell. Then the output, I wonder what voltage the output is. It may just be a lithium cell output, but that's probably going to the little ubiquitous eight pin microcontroller. Um, and I'm guessing that because the LED can obviously go red, green, and blue, the minimalist, and it only ever is one color, would be to have an RGB LED with a single resistor to ground or positive, depending on the polarity. Uh, red, green, and blue. I'm guessing there may be a little single transistor boost circuit with an inductor, possibly with a diode and capacitor. I really don't know. I've not opened it up yet, but we'll find out in due course. But this is a wild guess, and that would be the higher voltage output going to the uh, grid plates that are going to do the water hydrogenization. And then just a button. So that's my guess at what might be inside. Not an awful lot. Sometimes we open these things up uh, and they, they're, you know, they're nothing like that. Let's open it up and find out. So let's get the spudger into this sticky pad here. <gasps> that's very promising. Ooh, and I think it might go back on again. Kind of over spudged that, but not to worry. The lithium cell looks like a very short 18650, which means it's uh, an 18 but not a 650. Let's uh, use unreasonable force on these because it's obviously the wrong screwdriver, so I'm just going to bludgeon on regardless. The changeover switch uh, that changes the polarity will just be a double pole changeover switch. 
it's very simple to implement the polarity reversal with that. So three screws in the bottom, three screws that just don't like this screwdriver at all, but that's okay, I'm non-repentant. And then how am I going to hike that out? Is this, I'm going to be able to just get in there and, oh, oh, that's a, a bit annoying. I'm also looking at some of these electrode type things and wonder what they're for. Uh, how am I going to get this out? If it doesn't come out too easily, I may pause. I wonder if this is pressed into this uh, stainless steel housing to... Uh, oh, it might be glued into the housing. If this takes uh, too long, I shall pause while I take it apart. Let's get something longer. Let's get a longer, longer those pliers. These non-electrically compliant long nose pliers. Oh, oh, I'm going to make a mess of things. Uh, this isn't wanting to come apart, is it? I get the feeling there might be a bottom part and a top part that's actually... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What's this? Now I've undone that, am I going to be able to lift this out like this? Yes, I am. That's what we want. So there's a polarity reversal switch can unplug, which is quite handy. The battery cannot unplug, which is not so handy. The uh, little metal strip in the bottom is actually just a spring-loaded plunger for the button. Oh, it's pretty much as I said, because there's the inductor. Uh, there's the charge circuitry for the lithium cell. There's the little ubiquitous 8-pin chip. There's a transistor, which... Uh, I'm uh, not sure what that's doing, and there is a sort of current limiting resistor, perhaps. There's the electrode connection points. One is basically connecting to the sort of, I'm guessing it'll be the sort of groundish. Oh, of course, it has to go through that polarity reversal thing. Right, I'm going to whip this out, uh, and I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to doodle down what I can actually see in this. Well, I've now taken a good look at the circuitry, and I've found the problem. And the really annoying thing is that somebody saved a wee penny and they hobbled a really nice design, a really nice construction to the unit. Everything's fine except for one small defect and it was childish. So let's take a look at the circuitry first. The USB power supply plugs in here to charge the lithium cell. And there's a TC4056 standard charge control chip that regulates the current to the cell for the charging also indicates to the microcontroller, which is in the back. I thought that was the microcontroller, and it's not. And it uses, for double protection, it uses a DW01A um, charge uh, protection, the lithium cell protection chip, and it's matching 8205A transistor. And those, uh, between the three of these, that's like a double barrel protection for the lithium cell. It's very good. The power supply, and I'll jump over to this side, branches off two ways. One leg of the positive rail goes up via this 2.2 ohm resistor and a couple of different size capacitors to provide different levels of filtering and powers the control chip. And this is the microcontroller. It's completely anonymous as it normally is. And they've got that connected to uh, an LED here with three separate resistors. So they could have used one resistor. I thought they might use one resistor. And they're all the same value, 100 ohm. They could have just used one 100 ohm resistor because they're only using red, green, and blue. But this gives them the option that if they wrote it into the software, they could have red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and white. They could use all the different combinations of colors. And that also controls this little boost converter chip, which is marked 3403D. Couldn't find much about that, but it's programmed to step the voltage up to 12 volts, and it works in conjunction with this inductor here. Now, this is uh, effectively, these are both been taken, I've not flipped it this time so that everything's in the correct order. But basically speaking, uh, the little chip here switches the inductor in pulses, and when it turns off, you get this sort of 
the sort of inertia of the current and in inductance in the inductor basically allows a, in a higher voltage to go through this diode. And when it goes through that diode, it charges these two parallel capacitors here, and that provides a stable 12 volt supply. The 12 volt supply goes to this socket, which goes to the uh, two way uh, changeover switch. And then the output of that just goes straight to the electrodes in the water container. And to check this out, I reassembled it and I put the bench power supply on the unit and it uh, set it to 12 volts and it worked perfectly and it was drawing about uh, just under 250 milliamps. So based on that, um, the 250 milliamps, I rounded it up to 250 milliamps, that equates to about 3 watts of power. And the way the boost regulator, the boost circuit works, is that uh, because the lithium cell is only supplying about 3 volts, this has to boost it up to the higher voltage. So it takes, for that quarter of an amp, it's actually taking about four times that. So it's drawing an amp or more. And as the voltage goes down, this thing will try and keep the voltage up. It'll, you know, just keep working harder. And it will draw more current and it'll boost the voltage up uh, to the till it gets to 12 volts. And that's where the problem occurred because this shitty cell here that was nicely wrapped with a lovely blue outer but had a slight ripple and then had this inner sleeve oop, get that sticky pad out of the way uh, with a pattern on it that resembled rust and corrosion which it is rust and corrosion the cell they used was incapable of supplying that current and what actually happened was that when the one amp was uh, required and I can demonstrate that Let's uh, turn this to the 2 amp setting and we'll put it around this cell that I've just patched in. So let's uh, get this, set this to DC, let's zero out and when I press the button now, it initially draws a low current because it's just light in LED but then when I press the button again, oh it actually it timed out there so let's try that again now it's going to bump the current up and it goes up to about an amp because that's quite a healthy battery and it's capable of supplying that current what was actually happening with this cell was that when it went up to the amp this couldn't deliver that current so the voltage dropped and then it would draw more current and the voltage would drop further and it would just went in this vicious cycle you know that it, as the current was going up and the voltage going further down it got to the point that the microcontroller wasn't able to run anymore cut out and reset the system. So um, basically speaking, and this is working now, I'm not sure if you're going to see that. Uh, probably not because it's so cloudy with all the bubbles in it now, but it's now doing with that battery what it should be doing, but unfortunately that battery won't fit in the case. It has to be this much shorter one, which is crap. So that is such a shame that they've taken such a well-designed product and then someone's made the bad decision to use crappy maybe used repurposed cells and that has hobbled the product because it is a quite a high current application at an amp or more so that's a shame it's a nice enough product um but the question is where would you get one that actually did the job and does it actually do anything this thing is producing lots of bubbles now well i'm gonna sniff it again sniff yeah absolutely it smells like ozone that's uh that's weird. Do you see all the, how it's gone so cloudy with the amount of bubbles? Actually, you know what? I shall show you it as it should be uh, by just finishing the video with the same shot as I started the video with. Uh, and you can see it properly operating with the blue light and the bubbles. But uh, ultimately, it's not going to do that for me unless I can find a cell like this. But having said that, um, yeah, it would probably be, you know, I wonder what size this is. I don't have a measuring tape handy. It will be a standard size, but the availability isn't going to be as good as an 18650. So, a bit disappointing, because other than that, it's a really nicely designed product. Oh, things worthy of mention. I'll just turn this off, because it really is producing tons of cloudy hydrogen in that water. When the... Uh, uh, what can I show you this on? Let's uh, use this. What's quite nice is that the, when the, where the electrode sits in, you've got a screw going through and you've got a little cup underneath and then the hole going through to the circuit board in the back with a spacer uh, and then the sort of nut in the back of that. But when the screw goes through, there's a slightly tapered wedge with a small hole that uh, is expanded when you push the screw through and that tapered wedge is in this hole. 
so that when you push the screw in, it expands it out, and as you tighten it down, it then compresses it in, and it closes around the threads, and that's the watertight seal. So, you know, it's such a shame. Nicely designed product, it does what it's supposed to do. Not that that actually has any real function in life, hydrogenated water, but it just hobbled by that silly move of using just a, a second source crappy battery. Oh well, that's how it goes. Ah, see, now that's what it was supposed to do, and with the big battery, it's now capable of doing its task and producing this flurry of tiny little hydrogen bubbles. It produces a lot of tiny little hydrogen bubbles. And it looks great, it looks very visual, which is the whole point for a quack product. But yeah, such a shame. But there you go, it does work when uh, you have a proper power supply, a proper lithium cell.